Hi guys, good to see everybody this weekend. So most of us are probably familiar with a potatoes gratin. That's something that we make here in the States a lot, but the French are really known for their vegetable gratins. They'll gratin anything. <laughs> And one of my favorite things in the summertime is the zucchini gratin. This is the perfect thing to serve this time of year if you're making a roast chicken for a Sunday night dinner. So for this recipe, we're gonna be using a gratin dish. And a gratin dish just basically looks like this. It's something low and shallow. And this is by design because you really want something that's sort of low and shallow so that every serving gets a little bit of all that crispy bit. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is butter your gratin dish because by the time we get the bechamel sauce in here and the Gruyere cheese, it gets a little sticky. So the butter is going to help with that. And all great French recipes start with butter, right? <laughs> Let's be honest. So we're gonna need seven cups of zucchini, which is about four to five good-sized zucchini. Now there's a couple different ways to go. You want to cut little rounds um, about a quarter of an inch thick. So you can cut them by hand, you can put them in a food processor if you have that blade attachment that will slice it for you. Or my favorite way to do it is with a mandolin. So I don't go in for a lot of kitchen gadgets, but this one I'm really sold on, especially for a lot of my French dishes that require very thinly sliced, precise vegetables. Now mandolins can be a little intimidating at first, but if you get a good one and you know how to use it properly, they will not hurt you. <laughs> so I really love this one by Good Grips because it's really solid, um, it has a locking function, and it has several different sizes that you can choose from. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this to a quarter inch thick, then if you are using a mandolin, I highly recommend looking for larger size zucchini that are thick like this because it'll help them move through the slicer um, a lot safer than something that's too tall and skinny. I would say though, don't ever take a piece of vegetable like this and just run it without the safety guard because that is a surefire way to cut yourself. These things move very quickly, so much so you don't even realize how quick it's moving until, yeah, it's too late. And the first couple slices are usually not the best, but you just gotta kinda get it going, and then once you got your hat on, then it'll start to slice. There you go. Okay, so I have my seven cups of zucchini here. I also have a cup of white onion that I've sliced very thinly. Um, so you wanna slice them into half moon, something like this. So I have a deep skillet here that I've got on a medium high flame. I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil. I could also use butter. Um, this is pretty rich, <laughs> this whole dish, I won't lie. So I try to be a little more conservative with the butter when I can. Uh, then we're gonna add our onions to the pan like this. And we're gonna get these going and we just wanna cook them until they are nice and translucent and fragrant. And as always, you can find the printable versions of these recipes on my website. And you can also sign up for my newsletter and then that way you'll get the newest recipe and video in your inbox every week. So if that's easier for you, you can do that too. And then we are also gonna season with a little bit of salt and pepper. Then once the onions start to look like this, then we wanna add our zucchini. So in it goes, and it is gonna bake in the oven, but I do like to give it a head start uh, just by steaming it a little bit with the onions. Because this dish only cooks for about 30 minutes in the oven, we kinda wanna give the zucchini a head start and then give them a little seasoning as well. And then we're gonna put the lid on and let this go for about five to seven minutes. And then when it's done, it'll look like this. It'll be kind of all steamy. The zucchini will look wet and sort of starting to be a little bit more opaque like that. That's perfect. So you can set these aside in a bowl and then I'll show you how to make the bechamel sauce. Okay, so for our bechamel sauce, we're going to add three tablespoons of butter. Now, if you've never made a bechamel sauce from scratch, it's super easy. Then once your butter looks like this, then you can add the flour. So I'm just using regular all-purpose flour. And then you're gonna give that a whisk until it starts to become kind of tasty, um, but combined. And you wanna cook it for at least a minute just to cook off that raw flour taste and to activate the flour. And I think the secret with bechamel sauce is to make sure you do have enough butter so that you don't have a real paste on your hands. Because if you have a paste, when you go to add the milk, which is what we're gonna do now, two cups, um, any kind of milk, you can use low fat, you can use whole, it won't get so clumpy on you. Then we are gonna season with a quarter teaspoon of salt, some freshly cracked pepper. And then I also like to use a little pinch of nutmeg. It's just really good in bechamel sauce. Sometimes I also like to throw in some garlic in bechamel, but I'm not gonna do it this time because we're gonna save the garlic for the homemade breadcrumbs, which is where they really belong. 
So we'll do the nutmeg here. Then you just want to continue to heat this and stir it just until it starts to bubble and thicken. So when it looks like this and it's thick and creamy and it's coating the spoon, um, then you know you're good to go. So now we don't want to put this on the zucchini just yet. We're just going to set this aside and work on the homemade breadcrumbs. Then we can assemble everything at the last minute and pop it in the oven. So we are going to be using sourdough bread. I think that this bread works the best for these types of breadcrumbs. And this dish really calls for homemade breadcrumbs. You certainly could use a mix of panko and store-bought breadcrumbs. If you're in a pinch, that would totally work. Or if you didn't have a food processor and you needed something easy, but if you really want to send this dish over the edge, you'll make the homemade breadcrumbs. They just are so delicious. Okay, so we're going to tear this bread up like this. And in fact, if you didn't have a food processor, you could also go through the painstaking task of just tearing the bread into little pieces because that's basically what the food processor is going to do for us. Um, so you could do that too. Okay, then we are also going to add two tablespoons of melted butter. Just like that. A little handful of fresh parsley, so about two tablespoons or so. One garlic clove that you've minced, and a little bit of salt, and a little bit of pepper. See, how easy? Totally worth the effort. We're gonna put the top on and then we're gonna pulse it up. I don't like to take it too far. I still like to be uh, kind of chunky with it, so something like this. Okay, so let's assemble our gratin. So because our bechamel sauce was sitting for a bit, it might start to thicken on you. If it does, I would just reheat it quickly and give it a whisk. Um, that will just remove any skin that may have formed. And also it will make it more pourable because we wanna make sure that we can equally distribute it in our gratin pan and that it doesn't come out in like little flaps. Then we are just gonna pour this right over just like so. Then, the best part, the cheese. <laughs> so I have a cup here of just grated Gruyere cheese. Okay, then we have our fabulous breadcrumbs that we are gonna put on top here. Then we're gonna put this in a 375 degree Fahrenheit oven for just 30 minutes. And then when it's done, it'll look like this. The sauce will be bubbling and those breadcrumbs will be nice and crispy. I'm just gonna go for it. Try to let. This is so delicious. I could just have this for dinner. I don't even need the chicken. <laughs> this is so good. You've got to go with the Gruyere cheese because the bite of the cheese against the creaminess of the bechamel sauce, it is such a winner. All right, you guys, I hope you give this one a try. Let me know what you think. Tag me on Instagram with your photos and I'll regram my favorites. All right, you guys, I'll see you next week. Bye.